everybody to Spirit Scrutiny. I'm T, your girl T from Adventures of Spirits. And this is the beginning of my wine series. So over the next few few weeks, leading into a couple of months, we'll be exploring um, the spirit of wine. So our first range of series will be white wines. Then I'll even introduce to you some of the red grapes that you can drink, um, some wines that you can drink that will help you transition over to the red wines. And then we will explore the red wines. Then we'll end with a couple of, uh, I would say wines that are a little different, such as like your sakis and um, you know your ice wines and so forth. Some of those other wines that most people don't usually talk about most of the time, but they are wines. The same thing as ports. So we'll be going through ports as well. So what I wanted to do um, right now, um, I thought I had everything. Wait, I might have everything. Give me a minute, folks. I'm having a geriatric moment. Yes, I think I have everything. But anyway, hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, everybody's doing good. Um, I'm actually going to pull up my notes for you because I don't want to assume that everybody knows and understands um, what wine is. Um, you know, instead of just going through a series with... Um, just with the assumption, um, you know, my channel wouldn't be my channel if I didn't make sure that I'm providing some information to you, right? All right, so therefore, let me pull up my um, white wine series. Um, I do have um, just a couple of slides, just, you know, I have them already from my tastings, um, but I find that they're very useful because I don't memorize everything. I remember some things, but I don't memorize everything. And for those people who maybe are looking into um, exploring wines further or learning more about them, um, I don't know, some people are, you know, wine enthusiasts, some are sommeliers, some people, you know, want to go to school and, and, and learn and um, go to different parts of the world and um, explore. Um, but I just don't want to take for granted that everyone knows what wine is, right? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize myself and I'm going to share with you um, an intro of what wine is. Some of the um, regular general foundation um, basic information of wine. Um, and then we'll run into our wine that is going to be featured today. And the grape for today, we are exploring Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. So with that stated, let's get into the um, wine series here. All right, everybody. So let's look at this. So what is wine, right? So um, most people say, oh, just some old grapes. No, they're not just old grapes, okay? Well, they are old grapes. They're fruit, basically. So basically, it's an alcoholic beverage that's made with fermented juices of grapes. So basically, if you smash up grapes and you let them sit for a certain amount of time, they turn into wine, which is the reason why if you have a old bag of grapes in your refrigerator and after a while they get real old they start to smell almost like alcohol 
same thing. It's the same thing with wine. The only difference is there's different type of grapes. Okay. So with these grapes, you got to understand there's different types of grapes. Um, you have these grapes, uh, as you can see, you have table grapes and you have wine grapes. Now your, your table grapes are usually, they're grown in a way to make them more physically appealing. So they're usually bigger, um, less acidity, sugar, um, and they're usually much larger. And some of them are seedless. Some have seeds, but some are seedless and their skin and the pulp is, um, I'm, th I'm sorry, their skin is thinner, but the pulp on the inside is thicker, okay? Which is the reason why you can peel a grape and you'll still have that big, thick pulp that's on the inside and you can eat that. However, wine grapes are very small, and pretty ugly, actually. They're not, you know, to me, they actually look like a blueberry. Like they look something like that, but they're not perfectly round. They usually have, you know, little bruises and things on them. And um, basically they're, they're very much sweet. They're sweeter, um, very potent. They have thicker skins, okay, and a higher juice content. So, you know, when you, um, have any of you ever juiced before? Well, for those of you who've ever juiced before, um, you know, you just want to clean your digestive system out. You just want to juice for the next couple of days or weeks. Well, um, a cucumber will give off more juice than let's just say one carrot, you know, because of the amount of juice that's in there. So the, a wine grape will give off more juice than a one big table grape, okay? Um, and their acidity is usually higher as well as their sugar content. So how does how is wine produced? So let's talk about that very quickly. Um, most of you already know, you know, you harvest the grapes, you extract the juice, it, it gets old, it ferments, not get old, but you know what I mean, it ages, it ferments, um, then they pressurize it, they filter it, and then it goes into the bottle and it becomes, I mean, it ages for a while, then they put it in the bottle, and next thing you know is for sale on the shelf for you to consume, okay, some a little sooner than others. Um, what are the different wine categories? You know, you have white wines, you have red wines, you have rosés that's like semi pink, and then you also have your sparkling wine category. Okay, um, your white wines can range anywhere from um, dry to sweet. They're usually your lower alcohol um, percentage. Um, red wine are usually higher in alcohol. And usually they're very dry to sweet. Now, usually the sweeter red wines are not that high in alcohol. Um, it's normal. Usually the, the less sweeter ones are usually higher in alcohol content. Um, rose wine is usually bone dry to semi-sweet. I don't particularly care for rosé. Um, unless maybe it's mixed in a spritz or something. Um, and that's usually low alcohol. And then the other category, sparkling wine, we all know those, you know, your sparkling wines, all of your bubbly wines. Um, and usually those are low in alcohol and usually can run anywhere from, um, from dry to semi-sweet to, in some instances, sweet, but most of the time semi-sweet, okay? Those are your champagnes and your Proseccos. So some of the wine terminology you'll probably hear me use throughout this entire series over the next, uh, I think maybe it's about the next uh, 11, 12 weeks, I believe. Um, as I go through all of the, all of the different um, wine grapes, um, you're gonna hear me use some of these terminologies. And when I use it, I want you to understand what I'm talking about. Um, and so I just rather introduce this information to you here. So when you hear me speak throughout it, when we're tasting and talking about each of the grapes and we're actually tasting the wines, you can be familiar with what it, what I'm talking about. Okay, so here you have aeration. Okay, so aeration is basically when you're exposing the wine to air, basically oxygenating it. You know, you ever hear them say, oh, let the wine breathe, you know? And it's like, okay, what does what do they mean by that? Well, it just means basically what it means. You take open it up so the wine is exposed to oxygen for a certain amount of time to release most of the flavors because it's been, um, you know, stuck in the bottle for so long. 
do know that most of the time, the white wines won't necessarily need aeration as much. Um, most of the time they don't, is mainly the red wines, okay? Um, but do know that oxygenation with any wine, whether it's white or not, will always release a better flavor, um, you know, over time, okay? Then you have your aftertaste, and that's basically the taste that lingers in your mouth. So it's just like when we are drinking um, bourbon or whiskey or rum or anything else, basically is what flavor do you taste in your mouth um, after you swallow and the and it, you know, you're waiting for the taste of it to dissipate. What is that taste? That is your aftertaste. Then you have your body. Basically, how thick is the wine? You know, um, when you see people take it and they twirl it this way and this way, they're actually looking at whether it's light or whether it's heavy. If it's heavy, then you're going to get some from legs, the legs may be wider because the, the wine is thicker. And then if it's light body, it may have very skinny legs and the legs may run rather quick. Then you have your mouthfeel. Basically, how does the wine taste on your tongue? Is it smooth? Is it gritty? It shouldn't be gritty. But just to give you an example, you know, is it smooth? Is it um, watery? Is it thick? Is it creamy? Um, basically, how does it taste and feel in your mouth? Then your nose. Your nose is basically, what does it smell like? Okay? No different than smelling any other um, spirit. Then you have tannins. So tannins is usually what um, a lot of people don't like about red wines. Um, they usually don't like the taste of the tannins. Um, and those are basically natural compounds that is found in wine. Um, that it creates like an astringent, a drying, a very bitter flavor. And usually red wines are more tannic than white wines, okay? Chardonnay to me, I taste tannins in, in Chardonnay, which is the reason why I don't drink Chardonnay unless it is um, aged in stainless steel. I don't do the oak Chardonnay, I'll do the stainless steel Chardonnay. Then you have your wine legs, which we've talked about already about the body of the wine. The wine legs are basically the, you know, the little drippings um, when you twirl the wine around in your glass. Okay. All right. So for those of you who will be tasting wine, if you're going to follow me throughout this series and taste some of your wine yourself, um, or if you're just going to give your own tasting um, at your home or share things with your friends or family or clients or whatever. Um, there's just certain things that you want to make sure you have um, when you're tasting your wine. So you want to make sure that you have um, palate cleansers handy, which consists of crackers, bread, water. Um, you want to have an aroma neutralizer handy, or maybe like a little cup of coffee beans. So when you smell um, the coffee beans, it'll clear your um, your nose palate for you to smell something else and it doesn't mix. Sort of like when you go pick up perfume or fragrances from the mall or from the store or boutique. Um, as you go to different, you smell different fragrances, if you don't clear your nose palate, you're not really smelling the true smell of the second fragrance because your nose still has the first fragrance in there. So the coffee beans help to neutralize your smell so you can start fresh with the next one. The third thing is your glass. So the reason I have this, both of these glasses up here, shout out to House of X. Um, they actually um, gifted me this glass, um, House of X Entertainment. It is a wine glass. This is a stemless wine glass, okay? Whereas this is a full wine glass and let me just go a little bigger so you can actually see much more clearly um but here this is a stemless wine glass here okay and this is a stem wine glass okay and the reason this is important is because hold on one second let me get back to um the screen but it's because um when you drink wine, the reason why wine has a long stem is because wine usually is served at a certain temperature. 
Okay. Um, now, please note that white wine and usually your bubblies are usually chilled. Okay. Um, and they usually, they're usually supposed to be chilled anywhere between, I believe, 50, 52 and 56. 52 to 57. That's basically where I keep my wine cooler um, set to. Um, however, red wine, some people drink it chilled. Um, some people just take it right off the shelf. You know, I can just grab my, my wine from off of my, uh, out of my wine um, racks here. Um, and you can serve them accordingly. Some people want it um, served, you may, maybe depends on the temperature in your home. But usually they say you want to at least serve red wine. I think if I'm not mistaken, like 65 or 67 degrees or so. Um, some may just take it at 72. It all depends. Um, but basically, if it's red wine, then I will usually use a stemless glass just because one is just smaller and it's less clunky and I don't have to sit it on something. And, you know, I can usually put this in a cup holder somewhere. Um, especially I'm at the my recliner looking at TV. Um, the stemless glass works because don't forget the reason for the stem is to make sure that you don't warm up your wine. So you're not supposed to hold your wine glass like this, like I've seen people do. You don't hold it like this. This isn't a snifter. This is not um, cognac. Okay, with cognac, you really could warm it up or should warm it up, and some people do warm it up, but when you hold it like this you're warming the bottom of your wine so you don't want to hold it like this you want to hold your wine glass by the stem to make sure you maintain the temperature of what you intended your wine to be when you have a stemless glass you're basically warming your wine but it's okay to do that with a a um a red wine or so, and most people will use a stemless glass like this for a cocktail versus wine, but some people drink wine out of it. But if it's something that you wanna keep cold or cool or chill the way you want it to and maintain it, um, unless you have ice in it, and I'm not judging anybody, you can put ice in your wine if that's what you want, but I'm not putting ice in my wine. But um, I just would like the temperature to stay just the way it is. so. I would not use this for white wine, but I could use this for my red wine, okay? All right. Um, when you do get the glass, you want to swirl, okay? Most people swirl for about six seconds, and you usually observe um, the actual wine in the glass. Um, then you want to smell the wine once, and then wait about 30 seconds, and then smell it again. Okay, and when you do smell it, you want to smell it once with your mouth closed and then smell it again with your mouth slightly parted because when your mouth is closed, you actually close your tongue actually closes um, your airway up, up like from your throat to your nose and you only smell it through your nose and it just goes straight down the back of your throat. But if you slightly open up your mouth and relax your tongue, when you smell it, you'll actually smell it through all of your nasal senses because your ears, your nose, and your throat are all connected down the same um, cavity. Um, and then once you do taste it, you want to sip it and you do want to swirl it in your mouth the first time to coat your palate. Some actual wine um, professionals, what they do is they'll do that, put it through their mouth like mouthwash, and then they'll spit it out. And then they'll go back and actually um, drink the wine at Taste the Wine after that, okay? So those are just some of the main things um, in reference to just an intro to wine, just a little um, basic knowledge of what wine is. Um, I'll get a little more in depth about maybe some other things that we might need when we get to the red wines. But for right now, we are good to go for the white wine series. So right now we will be tasting a Sauvignon Blanc. So there do know that when someone asks you what kind of wine you like, some people don't really uh, understand what that question means. And different people, depending on how much into wine they are, they may interpret that question differently. So if someone asks me what type of wine I prefer, or what type of wine I like, 
I'm not usually talking about the vineyard or the name brand of the wine. Okay. I'm usually talking about the actual grape. You know, do I like Sauvignon Blanc? Do I like Cabernet Sauvignon? Do I like Merlot? Do I like Chardonnay? Do I like Shiraz? Do I like Pinot Noir? Do I like Malbec? Those are the grapes of the wine. Okay. And so when someone asks you what type of wine you like, a lot of times it's best to start to explore instead of just saying, oh, I like that brand, that name. And it's fine to like that name, but that name may sell a bunch of different types of, they may sell different types of wines under the same vineyard. They might sell a red, they might sell a blend, they might sell Cabernet Sauvignon, they may sell Cabernet Franc, they may sell Sauvignon Blanc, they may sell Pinot Grigio. So if you just say the vineyard, you may not know. However, the only time the vineyard is important is if it is a specific grape that is grown in so many various places that the vineyard does matter because it does matter where the grapes were grown, where it was, um, everything was harvested because that does impact the taste of the actual wine. Okay, so let's get into Sauvignon Blanc. So Sauvignon Blanc, there's there's so many different various um um, grapes, and we're going to go through that through this series. But tonight we are talking about Sauvignon Blanc, which is also known as the wild white, is what they call it. Okay, the grape originates um, from the Bordeaux region of France um, or New Zealand, so it can come from either or. Okay, it can be dry or sweet, and it's fermented in stainless steel, which is actually why outside of Prosecco or the bubbly wines. This is actually my favorite white wine outside of the bubbles that I know for a fact that no matter who makes it, I'm going to like this grape just because it just seems to be consistent with this crispiness, especially since it's fermented in stainless steel, okay? If it was fermented in oak, then I might, it might vary a little bit. I might tell you, I like Sauvignon Blanc, but from this particular vineyard or from this particular producer, okay? Um, and it pairs well with white meats and shellfish, okay? So let's go ahead and taste this Sauvignon Blanc. So today we are, and please note that um, the wines that I'll be featuring throughout this series, it will be my first time tasting it with you all. Okay, I think there's might there might be maybe two or three out the whole entire wine series, whether it's white, bubbles, or red, that I've tasted. All these other ones are wines that I have accumulated and I have yet to taste them, so I'll be tasting it with you for the first time. So let's get into the Sauvignon Blanc. So this is Long Meadow Ranch, Napa Valley. Okay, and it's 2019, and it's from it's from Rutherford. So um, Long Meadow Ranch is the actual name of the actual um, vineyard, and my notes state that it is estate grown, meaning that it um, is family owned. The actual the actual vineyard is family owned, meaning it's not sold to anyone else. A family maintains this. Um, it's a state grown, meaning that it's within their property, which means they don't lease out, you know, they don't, they don't purchase space or from any place else. This is at their home. This is their estate. Um, and the price range of this one is about $20. So let's see how this tastes. And yes, this has a screw top and that's a, this is also another myth. I do know that I've heard people say, Oh, well, if it has a screw top, it might not be all that great. That's not true. Um, how you get to the wine has nothing to do with it, okay? You could put a cork in here. You can put a screw top. The wine is going to be the wine. It does not mean that it's cheaper or more expensive, okay? Um, it's just a matter of how it how it is bottled. But I can honestly tell you, I would take a screw top 
over anything over a cork any day. Why? Because it's easier for me to put this top back on just like I'm doing right now, because chances are I'm not about to drink this whole bottle. So I'm able to close this up and put it right back in my wine cooler for another day to drink some of it. Okay. Now, please note that once you open up your wine, okay, they don't last forever. Okay. Some of them will go rancid after a while. So once you open them, it all depends on which grape it is, depends on what temperatures you're keeping it at. And it also depends on whether it's red, white, rosé, or bubbly of how long that it lasts, okay? So I'll probably do a video on that to just give some um, some background about um, how to store your wines and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and taste this Long Meadow Ranch Sauvignon Blanc. All right, what does this taste like? Let's we'll see. Well, what we're gonna do is swirl. So you swirl your wine. Okay. It doesn't need oxygenation, but I'm swirling it because I need to see. I'm gonna check the body of it. I'm gonna look at the legs. Okay. And then I'm also gonna look at the color. So now that I swirled it, I see that is it's very light body. It's not heavy body. And the legs are running rather very skinny and very quickly, okay? Which means it's light body. It's sort of like, almost like water, okay? So it's really no thickness to this Sauvignon Blanc. And the color of this is like a very, very pale yellow, um, almost clear, okay? It's not, as you can see, it's just a very, very pale yellow, almost like a, a beige in color, okay? And so now we're going to smell it. And remember what I said, you want to smell it, take in a deep breath. And when you smell your wine, you don't smell it all the way from here. You want to put your nose in the glass, okay? Your nose. Don't let someone else put their nose on your stuff. Okay. Oh, and I have a story about that. I'll tell you that another time. Now I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds and then I'm gonna smell it again, but this time I'm gonna smell it with my mouth slightly parted. Okay, so just so you'll know, what I smell here, I smell butter, I smell um, grapefruit, I smell like a, like a peach. Hmm. I also, it's citrus, but I'm trying to think of what, which citrus it is. Um, I don't want to say lemon. It's not lemon. It just has a citrus smell to it. But it's, it smells very good. It's very crisp, um, a very crisp, very light, airy, um, summer type uh, taste. I mean, smell, sorry. Now it just makes me want to taste it. So now I'm about to taste it. So remember what I said. Now this is my first taste of this wine, of all wine just for the day. So I swish it around my mouth like mouthwash, but I'm not spitting mine out. I swallowed mine, okay? So I'm not gonna pay attention to that taste because the first taste is never the real taste. So now I'm going to give it a taste. So I'm tasting exactly what I smell. So I taste grapefruit. I taste citrus, but now it tastes more like lemon. It's very buttery. That's the first initial taste, okay? 
Now, right now, my mouthfeel, remember I told you about the mouthfeel. So it's almost like water. So my mouth, my mouth, the mouthfeel is no different than drinking water, basically. Um, the alcohol content in this one is not that high. This one is, uh, well, okay, I take that back. This is a first. This is 13, 13% um, alcohol, which is like 26 proof, I guess. But 13% out of 13.6% alcohol, which is somewhere up in the high range because um, usually the wines that they consider very high, not very high, but high is like around 15, 15, 16. So this is pretty close to it, but I can tell you it doesn't give you that taste, okay? Um, now I'm waiting for the aftertaste to see what it tastes like after, but also to see whether it's a short finish or a long finish. So short finish means you put something in your mouth, you taste it, and then it's quickly gone. You don't taste anything anymore. Long finish is when you have a lingering taste. Anything I would say after, anything after, you know, 15 seconds is considered long. If it ends within 10 or 15 seconds, it's very short. So this one has a very short finish. It, it was well, not very short, but it has a short finish. The, the taste or flavor is gone, but the, the, the residual, the aftertaste that I have in my mouth, I'm still tasting the butter and it leaves the citrus, but like the fruit that I was tasting before is gone. Um, that flavor is then gone, but um, this is a pretty good Sauvignon Blanc. All right. Okay, Long Meadow Ranch. You got my win for today. Um, but um, not sure if you've ever tried this or not, but if so, this actually tastes like a good brand, especially those individuals who like something very crisp, like those who like spritzers type flavors of drinks. This is, this is uh, something that's very clean, very fresh, um, very easy drinking. Um, probably so easy to drink that um, you'll probably could drink the whole bottle if you wanted to <laughs> and you wouldn't have to really worry about much. Um, but it actually tastes very good and it is definitely something that I would recommend. And at a price point of an average of $20, how can you beat it, right? All right. So that was our review for today. Um, Savion Blanc. So join me next week, Wednesday, Spirit Scrutiny, episode two of the white wine of the wine series, White Wine. And we will be reviewing Pinot Grigio, also known as Pinot Gris. So if you like this content, please hit that like button and please hit subscribe if you would like to continue to see this series or some of my other videos that I have. I do uh, lives on Tuesday with my husband, Pretty Timmy is what he calls himself. Um, and we actually explore making of various of different cocktails, especially those that uh, maybe we've tasted someplace else that we want to recreate or things that we've heard and maybe we want to just put our own spin on it. And then every other, well, not every other, but the second and fourth Monday of each uh, month this year, we will be um, exploring the YouTube series where we will be interviewing multiple other YouTube channels um, and getting their input and their lessons learned, their challenges um, and their growth experience through um, having a YouTube channel. However, Spirit Scrutiny is on Wednesday at six o'clock. Tuesdays are lives every Tuesday lives at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time and second and fourth monday for monday ventures for the youtube series interviews those are at 8 p.m so 
Again, if you like this channel, please hit that like button and subscribe and please share it out. And hopefully you learned something today or maybe I've shared something that you didn't originally know. But leave me a comment in the um, in the comment section if you have any questions or if you just wanted to give me some feedback about this video. Thank you, every, thank you everybody, and you have a good evening. Let's have a toast for the real ones.